When you think about your lawn care or landscaping company's brand, the last thing you would ever want to be seen as is average. But unfortunately, that's the majority of companies, the image that they portray in our industry. One of the ways that they reinforce this average mentality is by using stock photos or amateur photos. So today, I am going to introduce you to one of my friends, Mike, uh, that we work with, who does a lot of photo shoots for our clients at Landscape Leadership. Um, and we're gonna talk about some of the primary images that you would use on your website and how you can make them not just look average, but make them look way above average. So one of the things that we do on shoots is we often tell people in the beginning that it's really important to have people in your pictures. Absolutely. Um, you know, companies in general, not even just the lawn care and landscaping industry are really notorious for marketing to an external solution or an external problem. Like I want green grass or I want a patio in my backyard. But people are who buys your service or products and they have a very specific use and they have these very internal problems that they're dealing with, like, you know, my deck is so small, I can't have more than two people over for dinner. Um, or when I get home, my lawn looks so bad, I just want to drive right into the garage and hide from my neighbors. <laughs> and, um, and so we want to get into that deeper part of our prospect, um, the website visitor or someone that's seeing marketing materials, and we want to show them somebody that's just kind of like them that has had a pain or a problem, and now they're succeeding. And the way that you do that through photography is including people in some of the foundational, most important images in your marketing arsenal. Uh, so some of these things we would call, um, we like to call them like a specifically on a website, we call them a hero image, mm -hmm. uh, meaning the first image that you come to, like when you go to uh, the homepage on the website or a service page, like the outdoor kitchens page. Mm -hmm. And so on our photo shoots together, we have instructed clients, um, hey, it would really be great if we could get people in these pictures. But that often comes with some challenges, right? Yeah, oh, absolutely. You know, when we're talking about having people in these, it's because people want to see themselves in a scenario. So some of the challenges that we face are, you know, not having people in photos, first of all, mm -hmm. um, or uh, not using models when you do have, you know, photography and and if you if you're able to have models we always highly suggest yeah. it because it, they just give you the best quality mm -hmm. uh they usually work a lot quicker because they're used to being on camera yeah. um but you know we can and do constantly work with amateurs and and just homeowners or whoever is there is uh to be on camera uh and is modeling for us it, it it just usually takes a little while longer to, mm -hmm. to build a rapport with them and to get them uh, comfortable on camera. Yeah, I mean, we understand that a lot of times when we start working with clients, they've done, they've used, you know, like low cost professionals or have done a lot of in-house amateur photography and it's not always the best. And so it's a little bit of a jump to even get to photography that is done by a professional, let alone pay your kind of rates. But. Um, <laughs> you know, that really delivers a really superb quality product and to hire a professional model for the day could be a big chunk. But we've been successful, I think, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, we've, we've gone to company owners like yourself and we've, we've asked them, do you have any family members, um, friends, um, maybe even teammates um, that maybe aren't, you know, plastered all over the website, mm -hmm. like, a, like a salesman and his family or someone that fits the bill. And those are stand-in models. They're amateur models that we've used in, in pictures. So tell me a little bit about, let's, let's talk about like, so these people aren't professionals. Um, they don't, there's some things you have to explain to them going into it. Um, where a professional model would step right in the situation and they'd understand you'd be able to use very few words and they could do what you're directing them to do. So tell me about using amateur models like this that the company owners, you know, get to participate. Um, what are some of the things from, you know, from a direction standpoint um, that we have to do when we first start working with them and how do we transition it from being kind of awkward to kind of a little more natural? Yeah, so working with amateur models, it, it, it's one of those things where you have to, to massage things a little bit more and, and finesse things. Uh, most of the time it, it just takes a little more time up front to kind of build a rapport, yeah. 
calm them down, relax them. Yeah. Um, but building a setting and a scenario that feels more natural mm-hmm. uh, also goes to kind of helping them relax and, and feel more like they're in a, a natural setting where they can actually just kind of forget the cameras there and just be themselves. And you know, if you give them a little direction up front, not too much, I feel like I get the best reactions like that. Um, but then like, you know, being in that setting then also relaxes them more and, you know. Yeah, like some of the situations that we've run into were like, you know, lawn shoots where we're on the lawn um, and, you know, like an outdoor kitchen photo mm-hmm. shoot, you know. So if you're thinking about those, those situations in actual real life, um, you know, on the lawn, what are you doing with your kids? You're playing ball with them. Um, if you're in your outdoor kitchen, you're grilling. And so we've used props and we've kind of, kind of inserted ourselves kind of in the party, like behind the scenes and we're doing shooting and we're just kind of having a fun time. We might be having a drink with them, um, or a cup of coffee and, um, really just kind of telling them, listen, you know, like just pretend I'm your buddy and I'm here and, and, um, or go out there and just play ball with your kid, you know, and have fun. And we've been able to capture some really, really great, powerful images that that's what people buy. Yeah. You know, they're not buying the lawn care program. They're buying those moments with their son in the backyard or, exactly. yeah, or having people over. So we each have our favorites. Um, you know, some of them are, are shared favorites, but there's so many great images that we've gotten on photo shoots uh, that had people in them, the heroes, the real heroes, uh, the people that are going to hopefully buy our, our clients' services. Um, there have been a bunch of those. So, so tell me, like, lawn care, what was some of the favorite images that you think we've shot for lawn care? Yeah, one of my favorite images was this grandfather and a grandson who was probably three, I think, and they were kind of sitting by a fire, and it was more or less, uh, I was trying to capture an emotion of, of the connection between the two of them, um, as opposed to just like blades of grass with them sitting in it. So they were sitting in a chair, we were around a fire pit, and I just, they were kind of like connected doing their thing, mm-hmm. and I was just snapping away. And keeping in mind, this is one of the things I have to keep in mind as a photographer doing commercial work, is yes, they are cute, and yes, this moment is really special, but you know we're still selling a service of lawn right. care. So I have to mm-hmm. kind of keep that in the back of my head. So when I was photographing them, I had to place them in the position where I could still see the lawn in the background. Yeah. In this feeling and emotion, the lawn is secondary, but the feeling and emotion of being able to enjoy the space with your child or your grandchild or your parent or whoever it is, that's the number one. Not just because there are people there, but because they're able to enjoy the space. That's really what you're trying to right. to push forward as a connection. And this photo just really, uh, for me, captures all of that. Yeah, we have several of those you know, with other people in the family. Um, there's some that are more tight, close in, yeah. where they're actually on the lawn, some that are pulled back a little bit. And, and again, like you said, when you look at the image in isolation, it might seem like, okay, this is a picture of a grandfather and grandson, but when it's in the context of being in lawn care marketing materials, it, it creates a deeper emotional connection. Exactly. Uh, another really powerful shoot we did was uh, for Kingstown in yeah. Virginia. Yeah, you know, there's a couple of things that when you think about like why you want to buy a service or why you haven't bought a service, th- there's really two places. You're having a, a pain or a failure. You know, there's something that's going tremendously wrong or there's a success that you're trying to steer people to. So those are really great images. Like the pest control images remind me of kind of that failure. Like if I'm going to do it myself or if I'm not going to do anything about it. So explain kind of what you were trying to do when we shot those pest control images um, for the pest control part of the business. Yeah, so what we were really trying to capture and go after was uh, the expression of frustration um, yeah. and, and how you know homeowners can get really frustrated with trying to figure out all of the different aspects, all of the different products that you could just you know, accumulate over time yeah. and, and not really knowing what they are supposed to do can really be frustrating. Yeah, you know, solutions that don't work, um, that was an easy thing to paint, a picture for us to paint there. The other thing that comes to my mind is too, like we, so that was the failure, we, mm-hmm. we kind of went to the success one, we started, you know, you think about building an outdoor living area, you know, you want a place that you can basically relax or create memories, and so we were able to do that in some photography um, for the website 
with some situations that we we simulated. <laughs> um, I think it was uh, it was a couple that the owner was friends with, yep. and they didn't have any kids or any that were available. So we actually used the owner's daughter <laughs> on the shoot that would be their their kids. So yeah temporarily adopted you know uh, for that shoot <laughs> you use what you have available sometimes yeah. so it just worked out um to be able to use her and and that couple who we were already using for some other of the photos yeah. so we hope this brief look into our conversation about professional photography has helped you understand not only just the importance and why these images are so powerful but what goes on behind the scenes and some of the things that it's helpful to think about, whether you're working with a professional photographer or an agency that's also helping with the direction of that. At the end of the day, really all we want is for you to succeed in your business and professional photography with heroes, people in the pictures is one way to do that. Thanks a lot, hope you're having a really great day.